And hello, good people of the internet. This is Tommy Kelly, and this is, of course, the Tommy Kelly Podcast. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about Jason Louv's new book, all about John Dee, which is called John Dee and the Empire of Angels, Enochian Magic and the Occult Roots of the Modern World. But I'll get into that later. Before then, I just want to remind everyone that there is a competition currently running on Facebook and Twitter where you can win a signed grimoire and a copy of the 47th deck. Now, this is open until the 11th, which is tomorrow if you are just a, a normal listener of uh, the podcast, not a Patreon. Because this comes out on a Thursday, it's over tomorrow. But it's easy to enter, so you have plenty of time to enter, in, in that you don't have much to do. All you have to do is go to the post that's in the description, the show notes, and just tell me why you think you should, why you should win this thing. And I will pick the best answer, or the answer that I like best. And I will send that person a grimoire on the deck, and that's how it goes. Now, while this is running, the deck is 25% off, so stand from $40 to $30. That's on Gamecraft, though. And the witch print is also 25% off, which is down from 40 euro to 30 euro. And that includes shipping and handling and all those good things anywhere in the world. So now is the time to get on get on those things if there's something you want, because we can back up to the normal price from next week. Also next week, all going to plan, fingers crossed, all of those things. The um, bigger version of the Fort Servants uh, deck in the box shall be uh, on sale that's all going to plan i was uh, i'm a bit behind on a lot of things so hopefully that is not just an empty promise so this is it's going to be quite a short episode this week because as i said i'm, I'm a bit behind on everything and it was a bank holiday here in ireland yesterday and that's kind of put me a day behind on things uh, so yeah let's just get on with it let's get into uh, jason Louv and john d So I want to talk a bit about John Dee and the Empire of Angels, Enochian Magic and the Occult Roots of the Modern World by Jason Louv. And before I start that, I want to uh, just say that I haven't actually finished it, but I wanted to get talking about it on the podcast um, now rather than later because Jason very kindly sent me the book uh, in, you know, in the exchange of please, you know, mention it and review it or what have you. And while it's kind of been hyped and it's out now and all that, I think it'd be better to get to, the, uh, you know, talk about it on the podcast now rather than in a couple of weeks when I finish it when, you know, the buzz might be a bit less on it. So it'll probably help Jason now and he'll probably be more relevant now and all that kind of thing. So Jason Louv, if you don't know, is a very well-known chaos magician. He um, has made appearances on the Dunkel, Duncan Trussell podcast, which you should check out. He's very good in that. He's a number of uh, YouTube videos, which are very good. He's doing an awful lot of them more uh, in support of the book. He has his own podcast uh, and he runs the site Ultra Culture. He has a kind of a magic school called Magic Me, magic.me, links are in the description, and uh, which is very good. I've taken a number of those courses. Um, they're, uh, he knows the stuff. He presents them very well. He's good at talking. He's very articulate. He expresses himself very well. He obviously puts a lot of thought into the construction of these talks so that, you know, he's not just sitting there for a couple of hours or whatever it is, just rambling. He has some sort of, you know, a lot of structure. He has thought about things. So they're good. And I've learned an awful lot from the earlier courses. The quality of the video and the sound isn't great, but as, as it goes on, they are much better. And his new equipment, um, as I've seen in a recent AMA, AMA that he did from CMG, is much better. And his camera and his audio is actually exceptional, one would say. So Jason ha wrote an article a while back, or I had a small mini book, I think, along uh, about John Dee, which he then turned into this bigger book uh, that encompasses a lot more, goes into a lot more depth and all of that kind of thing. And while I'm only halfway through it, I'm, 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 I'm more than halfway through it, um, I already know I love it. I, I really enjoy it. I like his style, um, explains it very well. There's a great narrative to it. Like, you know, it's one of those ones that it feels like a story rather than just a, a biography. Because I was kind of, you know, when you're reading like Crowley books and it goes on for like a hundred pages about his dad and his mother, and you're kind of going, I, you know, get to the good juicy bits about Crowley. You no, know, you know, while it's all context and you need all those things, I think you can spend too much time in this. But this one kind of felt like it jumped straight in, 
got to the point without leaving any of these details out. In particular, it was very good at giving the kind of putting the whole story in context. Because we might have, and I certainly I did, have the idea of John D and Edward Kelly and the Nokian uh, magic, which he never called it Nokian magic, incidentally. But kind of, it was in one of those, it's just kind of lost in time in, in many ways. I knew it was kind of back then, you know, middle ages kind of thing, but I didn't really know what was the culture, what was the, you know, the kind of outlook and what kind of world this came from. Jason does an exceptional job at, you know, painting the picture of the world as it is in this kind of Protestant world and how the, you know, the, the viewed life and viewed magic and the way it was. And like, you'd still have people who would be done for witchcraft or, you know, sorcery or any of these things. And it was, you know, goes into the different power struggles that are gone in England that are Britain at the time and with the different kind of royal family uh, thing, you know, the, the incidents and stuff to make up who's in charge and that kind of thing and where uh, allegiances lie and all that. And Dee himself is kind of a, kind of, you know, goes with uh, whoever's kind of, for, for a while goes with kind of whoever's in charge and tries to cater his kind of work or his kind of outlook and stuff so that he can be helpful to whatever. Because he kind of, he craves, not craves, can't speak for the man, he seems to want to be, you know, in power and influential and stuff like that. And so, in a sense, we kind of, if Catholics are in charge, he's, you know, he's more Catholic men, when the pullback from uh, that and want more scientific, he gets a bit more scientific and that kind of thing. Jason explains it way better than I than I could. I would just say D was a bit of a chancer, and not that successful in that he was broke all the time and was always kind of trying to looking for money and looking for patronage, and he kind of bad. His dad was a bit of a a chancer, also got in trouble, and he he gave a bad name to the family. So those that that kind of a you know history and that kind of influence as well going on. But when it comes down to, I'm skipping loads of uh, things because I don't want to obviously want to spoil the book on anyone who wants to read it. So it eventually gets down to obviously that they make contact with these angels and all that kind of thing. And my fe- feeling of this is like, I it's like, the angels themselves don't seem to get anything right in their predictions at all. They don't make any predictions or right because the same thing oh this will happen within this your lifetime you will be king of wherever you know this will happen and none of it happens for the most part and yet the two boys Edward Kelly and John Dee go along with it you know because it's like John Dee is very religious and the angels are very <laughs> very Christian in that you know you must you must be sorry for your sins and you must be a good boy <laughs> and you know, you know you must bow down before God and the angels and all this kind of thing and he's very much into that Edward Kelly is a bit more mad Bit more crazy. He doesn't like it so much. He's he's always going. You know, give me my money. I want money. Give me some money, because they're broke and they're starving and they're you know they're not living well. And the angels just have no time for that whatsoever. Like they don't. They chastise them for asking for money to live, to eat, and stuff like that, and say you will be fine. You know, just you need to have more faith and stuff like that. It's as if the angels don't understand the idea of wealth or money, or if they do, they just would. To, to have total disdain for it, whatever, which is all well and good when you don't have to live in the world and don't have to deal with money and eat and all the material things that uh, people have to do. There's one big miracle that they do in that um, as part of getting out of a, a little uh, incident to get John Dee and Edward Kelly got in, they had to burn all their books and all the recordings of the angels contacts and stuff like that. And so to burn them. And of course, they turn up perfectly uh, a couple of days later, a couple of weeks later, whatever it is. And so that's 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 one of the more miraculous things. There was an orb that appears that was given to him for Edward Kelly to look into. And it was interesting because um, I just kind of assumed that, uh, you know, a lot of like a lot of people that Edward Kelly was a bit of a, you know, like a ruffian or not, well, not a ruffian. That's not that he was, but not, that's not what I mean. But like he was kind of trying to. Fl- if there's a huge chance that he was trying to fool D and try, you know, to try to make money out of D, but of course he didn't make any money. And what seems from the, Jason's reading of it is that uh, it was D who's really pushing this whole thing, and uh, you know, Edward Kelly's trying to escape it an awful lot and doesn't want anything to do with it, and is very fearful and very, you know, just not into it an awful lot. And it seems the whole time he was talking to the angels, who aren't nice by any sort of a thing, or you know, they're not 
don't come across as, you know, they're certainly not new age angels in any sort of way. You know, like these Kyle Grays or Lorna Burns, whatever, where they're all love and light. And, oh, life will be brilliant. These are like, no, this is awful. Life is, you know, <laughs> the end of the world, all this kind of stuff. But one of the big things that I remember reading about John D and Edward Kelly is that there was this, uh, excuse me, and I don't know where I read it. You know, I read Lon Milo de Kett's books and, and Donald Tyson's books, so it has to be from that. And I assume I read Crowley's work in it. But there was this idea of the angels telling him that there's only been the same amount of people I have seen of humans now as there ever was. And I could never find the quote and I could never find where it came from, but it always stuck with me. And it's in Jason's book. And it turned out that it wasn't an angel that said it to him. Along the way, when they were talking to the angels, Edward Kelly was also talking to demons and stuff like that, trying to get money. <laughs> you know, so it's they would appear as angels to him sometimes. And one of the angels, who they later decided it was a, a devil, uh, said this to him, said these things. That Jesus was not God, that no prayer ought to be made to Jesus, that there is no sin, that man's soul doth go from one body to another child's quickening or animation, that as many men and women as are now have always been, that is, so many human bodies and human souls, neither more nor less, as are now, have always been. That the generation of mankind from Adam and Eve is not a, a history but a but a writing that which had another sense. So, no Holy Ghost they acknowledged. They would, they would not suffer him to pray to Jesus first, but would rebuke him, saying that he had robbed God of his honour. So that's interesting. A lot of those things, as pointed out, it's kind of what uh, you know would be acceptable in these days. But it was obviously heresy back in the back in the day, in the day. But that thing of there's as many men and women and many human bodies and souls as there is now as there are ever will is a very interesting kind of concept, and it stuck me. And I remember talking about it at Lent in CMG one time and kind of going, that would imply if there is more people that there is a lot of uh, AI going on or, you know, uh, non-player characters, which is, it's kind of, it's that's one of those thoughts that leads you to be, you know, which is probably not a good thought because it leads you to horrible places in that, oh, well, it doesn't matter if it's a lot of suffering in the world because they're probably not real people anyway or, you know, in general, Fuck people, you know, because they're probably not all real. But it's also, you know, from a chaos magic point of view, it's an interesting thing to think about in that if, you know, even bringing in simulation theory and all that kind of thing, if there's only a number of people playing the game and the rest are non-player characters, then there's some fun to have in that kind of mind game. But I don't want to get too much on that because that's literally a throwaway book or throwaway part of the book. So at the end of the book, and the bit that is next for me to read, it, it goes into, you know, after uh, John Dee and stuff and what, what came after and the different people and how it, uh, it kind of influenced life and the centuries ahead of itself and stuff. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But as autobio- as biographies go of occult topics or whatever, it's definitely one of the better ones. It's a good pace. It uh, gets you the information you want, gets you, to, you know, it, it, it explains all the different thoughts, different ideas. It has all of the um, all of the things you want in it without being bogged down or boring. Like that thing I was talking about when I seen Wild Wild Country, which is about Osho. And I didn't really know much about Osho. And I still, having watched six hours of it or whatever, know nothing about Osho. I don't know what he taught. I don't know what he, you know, what his actual theories were or what his kind of spirituality was, other than there was some sort of free love thing. And this is six hours of a program about him. Whereas... Already halfway through John D and Empire of Angels, and I know I, you know, I have a, a good idea of who John D was, what he, t- what his view of life was, what the view of the world around him was, how do you know what Europe was like at the time, what Edward Kelly was like, what the angels were like, what was said, what was all of these things. So it's very comprehensive without you ever feeling like you're reading walls of text. So fair dues to Jason on that. So that's kind of my, um in progress look at at the book and I, I will come back to it at the end to tell you what I thought of the second half but I just wanted to get it out there so that uh, you know while it was relevant and while people were uh, interested which is probably h- harsh in one sense because I think this book is probably going to be around for a long while and will be you know it's not just going to be 
you know, flash pan for, uh, for a couple of weeks and people forget about it. I think it's an important book in the history of occultism and magic and certainly puts a lot of perspective and a lot of ideas and all that kind of thing out in the open and in clear sight for people. It's the occult, a lot of the occult around John Dee, I suppose. So worth your time, um, you know, worth your money, get it, buy it or whatever. Again, I have to say that I got a free copy. I got a review copy. And I'm obliged to tell you that. So, um, but it was not under any kind of, you know, I'll give you a free copy if you write a good review. It was just, do you want to read this book? And, uh, you know, talk about it. And uh, which is what I've done. And I enjoyed it. And uh, thank you very much, Jason Louvre, for sending it to me. And Jason Louvre's uh, publishing company, who actually sent it to me physically. And it arrived on a Saturday by special delivery, which was very nice. So, yeah, check it out if you think that is something that you would be into. So that was another episode of the Tommy Kelly podcast. And I was Tommy Kelly and I still am Tommy Kelly. And I hope to be Tommy Kelly for the foreseeable future. Unless, of course, like we discussed last week, Tommy Kelly doesn't actually exist. And I'm nothing more than a collection of ideas. So who knows if you would like to hear last week's episode, which is all about whether I exist as a person or not, or whether you exist as a person. I'm all inclusive here. Then go to TommyKellyPodcast.com and you can listen to that one. And... 40 odd other ones and um, they're, they're all there in a nice little kind of a menu thing where you can click on them and play them so if you would like to know more about me in general then you can go to adventuresandwoowoo.com and you can click on the about page and it will tell you a bit more about me but you can also find out information there about the 40 servants which is a magic and divination system that I created the four devils which is kind of uh, four unique servitors that can be used to get you more of what you want and less what if you don't want and um, you can also find a youtube channel there all links to that where i've done vlogs where i do uh, the 40 servants course which is a video course explaining all about the 40 servants and how to use them and what they are and that is all free if you would like to support me with your monies then you can go to tommykelly.com which is t-o-m-m-i-e kelly.com and that'll bring you straight to my patreon where you can uh, give me your money and in return i will give you a number of rewards depending on what type of money you give me and one of the rewards is that you get uh, access to a thing called the journey which is a year long meditation shadow working that we've been doing for since the beginning of the year and you can join that at any time it's not like it's an ongoing thing and um, can work you know start today start tomorrow you will also get PDFs of the Grimoire of the Four Servants, which is the only place in the entire world where you can get the PDF. Um, you will also get all my comics uh, as PDFs. Um, I think the PDFs, yes, they probably are PDFs. Um, and you get a, a number of other things. There's a digital download of the deck. There's the flashcards. There's a number of things. So you, they're all uh, on the sides. There's four different tiers, four different amounts of money. If you would like to help me without spending any of your money, then please like this on whatever platform you are listening to it on and um, leave a comment tell me what you thought of it leave a five star rating and uh, all that, that that kind of stuff don't give me a non five star rating because that's you know that's just not helpful to anyone uh, even if i deserve it like i mean uh, you know five star ratings only please uh, thumbs up shares tell people tell your friends about it tell you know um groups you're in on facebook post about it all of those kind of things all of that stuff really really helps get the word out there and uh, keep this going so good people of the internet may you have a wonderful week and uh, may you have great weather whatever it is we're coming into the summer here in ireland so we usually get about four hours of summer and uh looking forward to that um, but wherever it is may your weather uh, inspire you may it help you create the type of life that you want uh, to create may it improve your art May it improve your soul. May you have just the most fantastic week that you could possibly want. And I will speak to you all next week. So good people of the internet, be well.